Hey everyone, today I want to show you how I assemble a 1 inch PVC rocket motor. But before I get started on that, I want to introduce KC, my audio and video technician who has been with me from the start. So without any more delay, introducing Carl Cato. Yeah, okay, so maybe that explains a few things. Today I'm going to show you how I assemble a 6 inch PVC rocket motor. I have a Schedule 40 pipe that's one inch in diameter. This motor uses a 3 16 nozzle that has a 3 16 inch fender washer inside. I showed you in a previous video series how to make the nozzles and how to cast them. And in another series I showed you how to make the fuel that I'll be using in this motor. In a later series I'll show you how I make a nine and a half inch motor that uses a quarter inch nozzle. I use a modular design for this motor so it can be made into two different sizes. For a ground test, I just use a one inch cap. If I want to fly this in a rocket, I assemble it with an ejection charge and I'll show you how I do that in another video. Do not put more than six inches or 120 grams of fuel in the motor. Sometimes it's necessary to trim the inhibitor to get it to fit into the motor tube. That's okay, we have plenty. Now that I have the fuel in the motor, it's time to start gluing the parts together. I like this Gorilla Glue because it has very little smell to it. Push the nozzle swiftly into the coupler and make sure that it's seated properly all the way in. If this is the first motor that you have assembled, I suggest that you glue the cap on it and ground test it. I use a quarter teaspoon of zinc and sulfur to prime the motor. I also use this wireless device and an electric match like you would use for home fireworks to light it off. Once the motor is constructed, I take one of these foam earplugs and place it in the nozzle. That helps keep moisture out of the fuel. You want to keep the motor as dry as possible. When you get to the testing site, Take a quarter teaspoon of the zinc and sulfur pyrogen mix and place it into the nozzle and tap it down in there. I use 12 grams of zinc to 4 grams of sulfur and I keep that on hand. Then I take the igniter, place it inside the motor all the way to the end. And then take the foam earplug and push it in there. That holds the pyrogen mix inside the motor and keeps everything nice and neat. There are a couple different ways to test the motor. You can dig a hole in the ground, place the motor in with the nozzle facing up, and test it that way. Or, you, my favorite way is to attach it to a sawhorse with duct tape and go around the motor several times so it's nice and secure. Make sure you weight the sawhorse because the motor has a lot of thrust and may move the sawhorse or even flip it over. Keep your motor stored in a launch box or bag and make sure it's secure until you get to the launch site. Test your motors in an open field away from neighborhoods and other people. Also, when you test the motor, it makes a lot of noise. And the last thing you want to do is draw attention to the authorities and have them show up and then try to explain to them that this is a rocket motor. So be safe and be careful when you carry out the test. Don't get anywhere near it. I've never had one of these motors fail, but if one ever does, I don't want to be anywhere close to it. So use your remote control, be smart, and stay away from it. In closing, remember to be safe, keep a safe distance, think about what you're doing before you do it. Until then, blue skies and bright parachutes, I'll see you later.